Venerable religious and dear parishioners, I know I've mentioned this time and again, but it's good to reflect on how Holy Mother Church is preparing us for Lent. This pre-Lenten season has been totally eliminated, of course, in the Church of Vatican II, but we can see the necessity of it, and for these three Sundays before Lent, the Church has been telling us in unmistakable terms the three areas that we need to do more of and more intensely during Lent. St. Paul exhorts us to chastise our bodies on Septuagesima, that's fasting, mortification, self-denial. We can't get to heaven without it. We will lose our souls. Last Sunday, we heard St. Paul after all of his, uh, after that very long list, all that he suffered and endured, him crying out to God in prayer, take this sting of the flesh away from me. And God says, no, I'll give you the grace to bear with it. My grace is sufficient for thee. So we see the exhortation to prayer last Sunday. Without prayer, we will not get to heaven. We will lose our souls. As St. Alphonsus the Gori says, he who prays will save his soul. He who does not pray will not save his soul. So it, during Lent, we must, well, actually throughout our lives, we have to deny ourselves. We have to pray. We have to do works of charity. That's what the message is for today but more intensely, more focus, spiritual training camp time for all of us. This is what the season of Lent is. And this Sunday, we are exhorted to the works of charity. We need to do more of it, more almsgiving. Without charity, well, St. Paul tells us, you can go through the greatest actions, the greatest sufferings without charity. It means nothing. It's what we do and especially why we do it, the motive. So almsgiving, do more of it, more intensely during the holy season of Lent. Uh, two Sundays from now, we'll ha take up a second collection as a Lenten alms, an opportunity to give to others. So what a wonderful epistle we have before our eyes. And sometimes it almost doesn't mean to, it almost doesn't make sense. One line that at first sight seems like a contradiction. He says, if I give my body to be burned and yet do not have charity, it profits me nothing. Well, if you gave your body to be burned, wouldn't that be done out of charity? Well, out of love of God, yes. No other motive would be good enough. Or strong enough, I should say. But St. Paul is trying to get a point across. He says you have to have the motive if you want spiritual merit in heaven. And this is why sheer humanitarianism or philanthropy will not have any reward in heaven. Because you're looking for your reward here on earth. You know, getting recognized by others for what you do. It could even be the warm feeling we get. You know, oh, I helped somebody out today. That makes me feel good. If we stop with that, I mean, we did a good action, but what was the motive? Was it natural or supernatural? If it was natural, if we did it because we feel good, you know, being a do-gooder, then our reward is in this life, but not in the next. So supernatural charity always has the motive and somehow included the love of God. I'm doing this for the love of God. 
That's why that prayer is so helpful. Oh my Jesus, it is for love of thee and reparation for the offenses, offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary and for the conversion of sinners. Say that prayer during the day. Renew that intention you made with, on your, with your morning offering when you rolled out of bed and got on your knees. I offer up all my good actions for the love of God, not just for any natural motive. And then you will be storing up treasure in heaven. Without that motive, there's no treasure in heaven. The treasure or reward would be in this life. I remember reading something from St. Therese of Lisieux, just very beautifully put. She, she says, you get more merit for picking up a piece of thread from the ground when you don't feel like doing it than when you have the fervor and you pick it up. I mean, how many times can we pick up something that's out of place? Piece, something on the ground, something that needs to be thrown away. Do we just walk by it? No, that's for somebody else to do. I don't feel like doing it. But if you say, oh my Jesus, and you pick up that piece of thread, as St. Therese says, you have stored up treasure in heaven. More so than if you felt good doing it. So what a wonderful reflection about motivation. St. Paul puts it in the most dramatic way. If I should speak all the languages of the world, but do not have charity, I'm just a tinkling symbol. I'm just making noise. If I should prophesy and know all mysteries and all knowledge and have all faith, isn't this amazing? If I had so much faith that I could tell this mountain to move, but if I did not have charity, there's no merit in heaven. So you see, even faith needs to have that charity connected with it. And if I distribute all my goods to feed the poor, and if I deliver my body to be burned, yet do not have charity, it profits me nothing. And again, I mentioned that already. Sometimes there's a lot of good that gets done. Millionaires and billionaires can give away enormous amounts of money and services. As long as it was for a good object, it's a good deed. But is there treasure in heaven? Ah, that's where the motive comes into play. And then St. Paul goes on to tell us all the qualities that charity has. That willingness to believe others. The kindness. Are you kind in your dealings with others? Charity never fails. If a person ever says, oh, I used to love that person, but not anymore. Well, it wasn't true supernatural charity to begin with because true charity never fails. Supernatural charity never fails. So what a wonderful reflection again the Holy Mother Church puts before our eyes. By the way, the three first three days of Lent will repeat the same three themes. Ash Wednesday, self-denial, Thursday, Emphasis on prayer, Friday, emphasis on charity. You'll see it in the liturgy of the Mass. Holy Mother Church, what a wise and helpful mother she is to help us fulfill the purpose of the Holy Lenten season. There's one other way I wanted to share with you that helps us to see whether we're doing something for the love of God or not. And I truly believe that our distractions in prayer show us what in our lives is done for the love of God and what's not done for the love of God. You know, those thoughts that crowd in on you, 
during the Holy Rosary or other prayers or even during Holy Mass. I believe that in great measure those are the things that we do not do for the love of God. We do it for some other motive. And again, the treasure in heaven it isn't laid up then. So it's a good indicator. What, what do I do for the love of God? What do I not do for the love of God? You see, if the, these distractions we get during prayer, if the, they're not the things we do for the love of God, because if they were, we would easily be able to leave them aside when we're praying. Because we're doing it for the love of God, so why would we be focusing on them now? We're able to put them aside. It's those things again that lack the supernatural motive. So a good indicator and a way to battle t distractions during prayer. You say, you recognize you got this thought, something you were looking forward to doing today. You're going to enjoy it. It keeps coming back to you. Tell yourself, tell Jesus, I'm going to, Jesus, I'm going to do that for the love of thee. I'm going to try to put it aside right now. And I will try to work on my motivation. So just a suggestion to help you with those, dis those pesky distractions that can come up so often in our prayer life. So let us pray for each other to have a fervent observance of the Holy Lenten season. It will do much good for us. And you know what? It's going to do much good for the world, too. Remember Nineveh. On Ash Wednesday, the church will refer to Nineveh, how this city was going to be destroyed. And the people fasted and repented. And the great city was spared, even though it was destined for destruction. So it will bring great good upon ourselves and others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.